Now this is a unique design. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Recently, Chameleon Antennas reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out their lightweight in-fed sloper. This is the 10 through 40 meter version of the antenna. And when I took a look at it, I absolutely said yes, because it is a very unique design. Let me show you guys what I mean before we jump over and take a look at some of the test results. Not everything was as I expected, but this is still a very unique design. Let's see if I can hold this thing up here so you guys can see it. You've got two different feed points on this uh, antenna board. This side is an in-fed half wave, and this side is for the dipole. If you're using the dipole, you'll go ahead and connect your coax here. These are both BNC connectors. And then you get two connection points, one here and one on the other side for connecting each leg of the dipole. If you prefer an in-fed half wave instead, you can run with this feed point here and the in-fed half wave wire will attach right here. So it gives you a lot of different options and that's what really uh, got my curiosity going about this antenna because sometimes I might want to run a dipole and other times an in-fed half wave. Now, like I said, not everything went as I expected and you'll see what I mean in just a second when we jump over to the computer and start looking at some of the charts from the testing that I did with this antenna. But overall, I can say that I am extremely pleased. Let's go take a look at those numbers. Before we start taking a look at some of the SWR numbers, I did want to point out a couple of things. They do say that this is good for 10, 20, 15, and 10 with no tuner. They also say that you can use it on the other bands with a tuner. In addition to that, I did want to point out the power rating. So it looks like we get 100 watts single sideband, 50 watts CW, and 25 watts data. Okay, so starting out, I went ahead and ran this thing in the sloper configuration that they recommend in the manual for this particular antenna. You can see there I've got it up on the mast and then the wire is trailing off to the left hand side. Let's go ahead and take a look at 40 meters and you'll see a pretty good SWR chart here. It's resonant, it looks like down in the lower portion of the band, but it never really gets above two to one SWR throughout the entire portion of the 40 meter band. Taking a look now at the 20 meter band, you will see even a better result here. Uh, it looks like we're at 1.22 to one at 14.12 megahertz. And throughout the entire band, you can see that it never gets above 1.5 to one. Now the 15 meter band doesn't look quite as good. On the left hand side, you can see that that's basically three to one uh, SWR and it gets better. It's almost back down to a 1.5, maybe a 1.6, 1.7 on the far right hand side of that chart. 10 meters is kind of the same thing. On the left hand side, you'll see that it starts out right around three to one. And as we move to the right, we do get a decrease in SWR where we finally find a resonant point at 1.05 to 1 at 29.42. Now, while those numbers look pretty good, the way I prefer to run an in-fed half wave is with a feed point down just a foot or two off of the ground. The wire will then follow the mass up vertical about 30 feet or so, and then turn and go horizontal with the additional length of the wire. This gives me an inverted L configuration and the reason I really like this configuration is because I can deploy it in such a small footprint. So to have 60 something feet of wire out there and I only need about 30 feet of space, 30 feet of space to do it is always a winning ticket for me and the reason I prefer this. Now let's go ahead and start taking a look at these results. Now I apologize that the quality of these images aren't quite as good. There was a missed setting on the camera when I was making these. But this is the 10 meter band. On this particular uh, SWR chart you'll see that on the left hand side we're right around 2 to 1 and then it gets better on the far right hand side. So very similar to what you saw before uh, when we were running it in a sloper configuration. Next up, we'll take a look at 15 meters. And again, kind of the same thing we saw before. It's just under three to one 
on the left hand side and it drops down to roughly 1.6 to 1 at the top of the band. 20 meters looks even better. We've basically got a flat line all the way across the 20 meter band. We're roughly 1.7 to 1, uh, 1.8 to 1, somewhere in there. But I would definitely use this on the 20 meter band. 40 meters is where the problem came in for me. If you'll notice on the low end of 40 meters in this inverted L configuration, the SWR climbs to 5 to 1. Uh, so this is definitely not something I would be able to use in the field since I spend the majority of my time on the lower end of 40 meters in that digital range. So I decided to put my own length of wire on this antenna. Again, I started with a feed point right down there about 12, maybe 18 inches off the ground. And this is running in an inverted L configuration. After dialing in the length and trimming that wire three or four times, let's take a look at the results that I got. Here's the 40 meter band, and you can see that I'm just about 1.5 or less across the entire band. Yes, the far right hand side probably jumps up to 1.6, maybe 1.7, but I spend the more time in the lower portion of the band, so this doesn't bother me here. Taking a look at the 20 meter band, you can see that the entire band is less than 1.5 to 1, with the sweet spot being down around 14 megahertz. The 15 meter band looks good as well. Again, almost 1.5 to 1 throughout the entire band until we get up into the higher portion of it, and we're probably looking at 1.6, maybe 1.7 to 1 on 15 meters. 10 meters kind of does the reverse of what it did before I put my own wire on here. So I've got better SWR in the lower end and worse, uh, probably over 2 to 1 in the upper end of the 10 meter band. That's perfectly acceptable to me because I don't do a lot of work on 10 meters. Primarily, I'm going to use this antenna on either 40 or 20 meters. Now, I also did test this as a dipole, but I'm not going to go into those numbers as this video is already running a little bit long. Suffice to say, though, it works great as a dipole antenna. I tested both 12 meters and 17 meters as a dipole and got great results with both of those. So I'm certain if I connected a long enough wire, I could easily get an 80 meter dipole with this kit as well. All right, guys, there's a look at the Chameleon Lightweight Infed Sloper Antenna. Yep, it is definitely a sloper unless you custom configure your own wire lengths to it like I did. This one is probably going to be the new antenna for my truck kit. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.